Once you've gathered that information, almost in your library, I like to call it, of the Ontario Student Record, we need to look at what accommodations are in place that I am using as a classroom teacher to support this student. And that is outside of differentiated instruction and universal design. This is some accommodations that could include instructional accommodations, environmental accommodations, and assessment accommodations. An example of an instructional accommodation could be that you're using more visual supports, that you're incorporating assistive technology, possibly that you're using a visual schedule. You may be repeating information or chunking information that is um, being delivered. An environmental accommodation could be simply that where is the student in proximity to you when you are teaching? Are they at the front of the class or are they at the back of the class? Can I make a simple change so that the attention and focus and I can use maybe gesture cues to re, um, regain their focus and support them using nonverbal cues? Uh, assessment accommodations. Are they given possibly extra time to complete something? Are they giving chunk scaffolding or chunking information to support that they understand what they are doing and what they, with how they need to carry out a task? Are they readers? Can they read yet? If, they, if decoding is an issue, an assessment accommodation could include that you read something to them and they are orally able to tell you back and they understand the content and the comprehension. So those are just some simple things to tweak in terms of your classroom that you might want to consider in terms of what accommodations in terms of instructional, environmental and assessment accommodations do I have in place for the student to support them? And do I need to tweak anything and change something to support them in, uh, in a better manner? Once you've gathered all this information and you've discussed it with your administrator and your special education teacher, next steps could possibly be to reach out to what is called, each board will call it something different, but is your, your special services support team. And that is where you might possibly have a case conference where outside workers that support the, the school board are there to brainstorm, gather information and support you in next steps for programming. Some of those people that could be at the table and that are part of this team could be an assessment and programming teacher like myself. The administrator will always chair the meeting. Parent is always invited and permission is needed to proceed with a meeting when you are involving any outside support uh, teachers or agencies. It could include a social worker, a psychologist, and a speech and language pathologist. The teacher will always be there to present what is observable and measurable data. But there's a lot of steps in terms of A, clear communication with parents, meaningful, observable, and measurable data, recording and charting how have I communicated clearly and being transparent with parent in terms of the areas of need that I am concerned with as a classroom teacher, and have I consulted with the special education teacher who is an excellent resource within the school, my school administrator, and really researched in the Ontario student record to see what background information do I have that can help support where I'm going to move forward in my programming. Take care.